Welcome to the Orthoclips podcast series. I'm Saqib Rahman, and today I'm with Dr. David Gallows, who's an assistant professor of orthopedic surgery at Temple University Hospital. And uh, we're going to be talking about fascia iliaca blocks for hip fractures, the new standard, question mark. Um, welcome, David, to the podcast. Thank you for having me. So for those who don't know, David is actually um, my uh, partner at Temple University Hospital. He's an orthopedic trauma surgeon. And um, the topic is something uh, I know you've investigated, and I know you're going to give a lot of credit to the residents you've worked with um, who worked on this project with you. It's generated a lot of interest. Um, it was an award winner at the um, Orthopedic Trauma Association meeting this past uh, fall, and um, I don't know if you know this, it was highlighted in the AAOS Now uh, this past week. Um, and I think it's a topic of interest. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit how you got interested in this topic? Um, and I'd love to hear maybe if you had a case in particular that um, you can recall that spurred you to investigate this. Well, I've had an interest in pain control related to hip fractures for quite some time in my residency. I was involved in several different studies, including distal radius uh, related research and ankle fracture related research and pain control, looking at different blocks versus general anesthesia for pain control and opioid consumption. And then using uh, options like an on cue pump for ankle fractures that can kind of give a prolonged uh, delivery of uh, analgesia to help minimize the rebound pain that you have after a block to help hopefully decrease the amount of opioid use. And none of this has ever been really looked at for um, hip fractures in an easy way, other than maybe looking at how spinal anesthesia versus general anesthesia would, would do. Um, and so, you know, for me, I was always, I always had an interest in pain control and uh, fracture care. But um, to be honest, this study uh, actually started um, was actually thought of by the chairman at the hospital that I had worked at on Long Island, uh, Dr. Charles Rotolo, and the head of anesthesia at the time, Dr. Raymond Pesso. And they um, had thought of, you know, what would be an easy way to help minimize uh, pain uh, post-operatively in hip fracture patients, because obviously pain after a hip fracture may be limiting in terms of their ability to ambulate and function and also increase opioid consumption, which could in an elderly geriatric population lead to potentials for delirium postoperatively. And um, the idea of the fascia iliaca block, um, I believe was initially thought of uh, by Dr. Pesso at the time, who's the, uh, the anesthesiologist. And um, they started looking at it and ultimately um, we created this randomized control trial looking at patients who ended up with the fascia iliaca block and compared them to patients who then randomized to not receive the block. And we were able to track their opioid consumption in the early post-operative period. And we're able to find that there was a significant decrease in opioid consumption um, and pain scores. Um. So how, so maybe you can um, just elaborate on that. How did you, um, how did you do it at your center? So tell us the sort of specifics. I'm thinking maybe some of our listeners might be thinking, you know, practically speaking, uh, how do we pull this off? Are you doing it um, in the prep and hold area? Are you doing it when they hit the ER? Are you sending the pain team to the floor? Um, you know, a lot of surgeons and centers are, you know, they're concerned about their workflow also and throughput in the OR. Um, were there some growing pains there? What worked out? How did you do it for the intervention group? So obviously patients who were, patients were included were elderly kind of geriatric uh, patients and they were, you know, had femoral neck fractures or intertroch fractures. Um, we had kind of uh, pretty strict exclusion criteria for patients who were younger. We also have a, a, a patient population that was incarcerated that we kind of excluded. Um, but patients would come in um, and we have a geriatric hip program 
at our uh, at my previous facility uh, hospital system. Um, and so they would be admitted to the um, surgical ICU for optimization as part of their management. Um, but then we would randomize them to either receive the block preoperatively, um, generally uh, in the operating room right before um, induction, or just go straight to induction. And they would either get, groups would either get um, general anesthesia or spinal. In addition to the, in addition to either getting the block or not getting the block, but the 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 where we were trying to ultimately go with this was that it is an easy enough procedure to do, where under with with appropriate training it can be done in the emergency room, and it's something that even orthopedic residents or trainees or attendings can also do. Um, and you know, it's something that we have yet to implement. Our, we had yet to implement ourselves at the time, but was a topic of discussion for a while to see whether or not that could be something that you know, once the patient hits the door, they come in and get a fascia iliaca block. Okay, but in your study in particular, this was being done on the OR table, um, right before they were transferred over. Yeah. Okay, well, in the operating room, I guess. Correct. Um, okay, uh, that's good to know. So, when you so, I like to elaborate elaborate just a little bit on the results. Then, um, how powerful were the uh, findings, uh, and what do you think are some of the uh, potential benefits? And I'll just throw a couple things out there. Um, do you feel that it potentially helped? Uh, reduce delirium postoperatively? Uh, did it seem to help facilitate um, transition of care uh, sooner and reducing length of stay? Uh, what were some of the downstream benefits of um, reducing their pain overall by doing this? So um, in general, the pain control that was achieved with the fascia iliaca block led to a significant decrease in morphine consumption post-operatively. Uh, and it was, it was, and it was fairly dramatic. Um, the, the amount of, uh, the decrease in the morphine consumption went from like 0.4 milligrams to 19.4 milligrams with patients who were not receiving the block. Um, and then also the patient satisfaction was significantly increased by over 30%. We didn't look specifically at delirium postoperatively, but you, uh, you can imagine that decreasing the opioid consumption postoperatively by that much may have a significant impact on delirium. We just weren't powered to that level um, in our study. Okay. Yeah, I think, um, you know, with the focus on the opioid consumption recently, a lot of that has really been on outpatient post-surgical care, outpatient management of conditions. And, you know, this is a situation where you have, I think, a population that's potentially very sensitive to opioid consumption in the hospital, and that potentially can have uh, deleterious effects. So um, I think, um, you know, those who are interested uh, in, you know, researching ways to minimize opioid use on the inpatient side, I think would find interest in, in, in your findings. Yeah. Uh, do you think this should become the new standard of care uh, for geriatric hip fractures? Uh, I mean, there've been some other studies that um, sort of uh, echo your uh, group's findings. And if I, so, why or why not? I think so. I mean, just in, in terms of other um, potential benefits that I, uh, didn't quite mention yet was that they do have an increase in the number of steps they're able to ambulate postoperatively as well. So, you know, from, in terms of an implementation standpoint, it's fairly simple. Anesthesiologists, I think are familiar with it. And it's something that can be even taught to the orthopedic population. So it's something that could be easy to implement. It's something that is safe and it has significant benefits, including pain control, patient satisfaction, and then also functional outcomes. So patients are able to actually 
at least function in the early postoperative period better from an ambulation perspective than if they didn't have um, this. So I think it is something that should become a standard of care for our patients. And um, you know, in terms of the downsides, I mean, I, I think from an orthopedic community, it's not something that I had heard of prior to doing this study. It's not something that I was familiar with, not something that I had experience with. And I think that that may be um, something that a lot of other orthopedic surgeons may feel as well. I'm not sure what other people's experiences may be, but it's not something that you know, I think is very common to experience as an orthopedic surgeon. So um, I think getting the word out there about this um, type of procedure may help educate the, the public about its benefits and hopefully lead it to become um, a standard uh, pain control measure. Great. Uh, so to wrap up, uh, I guess I want to ask, and this is for some of the listeners who may be thinking about um, implementing this at their sites, um, what do you think are some of the obstacles? Uh, what can you uh, tell us maybe from your learning curve uh, doing and experiencing this? What suggestions do you have to those who are considering um, to do these at their institutions? What have you learned that you can share? Um, well, I think having a, uh, a, an anesthesia team that's familiar with it is something that's important. And it's something that I think, again, it's fairly easy uh, um, or it's fairly a straightforward procedure to do so, something that if they weren't familiar with to get them to become familiar with. Um, I think getting the, uh, uh, the entire team on board with the, with the way of implementing the uh, geriatric hip fracture type protocol will be important as well. Having a, a seamless transition from optimization early, getting to the patients to the operating room quickly, um, having them, uh, and then having uh, the anesthesiologist all on board with how are we gonna manage a patient's pain. So I think it becomes um, important to change the mindset of everybody who's involved in the care of geriatric hip fractures to get on board with, with this. And, but once that happens, I think it's fairly uh, easy and straightforward. So I think it has to become a team approach, just like everything we do uh, when managing complex, uh, medically fragile patients. Yeah, I think that's important. So hopefully, you know, for those of you who uh, might be interested in doing this, speak to your anesthesiology colleagues, um, look up uh, some of the data on this. And uh, like I said, uh, Dr. Gallos and his, um, his co-authors have uh, presented their work. It's um, uh, recently presented at the uh, OTA and it was highlighted in the AAOS Now publication uh, this week, if anybody wants to check that out. Um, so I think that'll be it for today. I wanna thank you again, David, for uh, coming on the podcast. Interesting topic. Uh, hopefully the listeners enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me.